Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker: The Witcher Tales. We're still in Rivia, liberating the land piece by piece. And I uh, kind of forgot, in the last episode we got the Black Blood card and never checked what that actually does. Black Blood damages all enemies by one and boosts an ally by the amount damaged. Cool, but not something I'm gonna use. I'm happy with the deck as it is. So, uh, moving on. So last time we also got the Cartographer Trophy, which means we found all the, the maps in the game, I think. Um, but, let's talk to this man. Your Majesty, a hunter from the shack, came out to meet us. Said he'd found an object most old and mystical while out hunting. Could be a piece of something larger though, of that he can't be sure. He thought it may prove of interest to you, Your Grace, and he's offering to sell it. Okay, mystical, he claims. How could I refuse? There we go. And um, we got, ooh, Dragon's Dream. Can we actually go past him now? Yeah, there we go. More recruits. Not that we really need them, but uh, there we have it. Which means we'll be heading up north. And north is interesting because our main quest is actually leading us towards that area. So across that bridge that we see on the right there. But uh, don't mind if I'm just gathering a few more resources. Which I can't really use anymore since I've completely upgraded my camp. But um, moving on across the bridge. Which the should be our next Tower. We draw near your grace. quest. No sign of villain yet. Far as I can see. Unsurprising. Prompt he never was. Okay, so the Devil's Tower, this is where we agreed with Willem to meet him. Although, this again might be a trap. But yeah, here we go. Moving on. The Queen had chosen to meet Willem at Devil's Tower. And not without purpose. The structure stood on an aisle, so no foe could approach without first exposing themselves on a narrow bridge. The isle had little vegetation midst which to conceal a large force. A small unit could evade detection. Altogether, not much to fear. No escorts were your terms, began Gascon, with a hint of mischief. But better safe than sorry, I always say. What are you suggesting? Yours truly, and four chaps behind the walls. Give a signal, any signal, and we'll leap to your side. Meave struggled with her conscience. There was no honor in Gascon's plan, but prudence, certainly. In the end, she nodded in agreement, though not without compunction. Okay, so we don't even have a choice here. Willem arrived soon after. The heavily armored cavalry he had in tow clearly there to boost his courage. He left them at the foot of the bridge and rode across alone. A stiff wind from the river nearly made off with his ermine fur cloak. Willem and the mother who'd borne him stood face to face. They gazed into each other's eyes, waiting to see who would look away first. When neither did, Meave broke the silence. Time flies and I have a kingdom to liberate. No need to drag this out. What's this about? Tell me. I thought my messenger already did. Oh, he did. And how? Willem I wishes to arrange a truce. Only... Willem I is in no position to parley on an equal footing. Willem I can, at most, offer his unconditional surrender because Willem I's losing this war. Yes, Mother. I am. And I see that by losing I've at last made you content. Okay. We're not here to discuss us, but the war. Maybe, yeah, let's, let's confront him with his own actions a bit. Do not play the victim. <laughs> Don't play the victim. What next? Will you say you turned cloak because mommy showed no warmth, displayed no feelings? It would be unfair any such judgment. You did show feelings, chiefly enmity, contempt. But that's not why I betrayed you. No, I simply disagreed with your choices, assessments. I had every right to do what I considered just and good. And I had every right to voice my view, which you ever ignored. <sighs> Yet this is neither the time nor the place to discuss that. Let us parley as strangers. I'm losing, you say. And you're right. But I haven't lost yet. And I've no intention to surrender. I am ready, however, to renounce my fealty to the Empire and pledge my forces to you. As long as you fulfill my conditions. Which are? This is gonna hurt. Mm-hmm. Let me hear them. First, you will not rescind the reforms I've authorized already, any of them. Second, you will guarantee both my safety and that of my advisors. 
Third, I shall remain your heir, and next in line for the throne. <laughs> ah, funny man. Arrest villain. <laughs> um, um, hmm. I shall remain your heir and next in line for the throne. That is an annoying one. That is an annoying one. Nobody's gonna like that. That is ridiculous. Laughable. Why would a traitor still remain the heir and next in line for the throne? You betrayed your own mother, son. Um, the other things I'm fine with. Rescinding, not rescinding his changes he made. I heard there were a few good ones, so I don't really care about that. Protecting him, fine. But being the heir next in line for the throne, that is ridiculous. Unacceptable. These terms I cannot accept. Well, I had to try, mother. Yet I can't deny your courage either. Come here. Look me in the eye. This couldn't have been easy. No, it wasn't. I trust when the time comes, you'll show the same nerve on the battlefield. I shall seek out your banner. Let the gods then settle our dispute once and for all. Goodbye, mother. Wow, not even an explanation. Here we go. Villain bowed, turned and walked away. Neve's anger burned still in her gut, beneath a heart now heavy with grief. Soon thereafter, Meave's army set out towards Rivia Castle. It would not be long now before the decisive battle. Thank you, Storyteller, for that clear indication that we're nearing the end of the game. I was looking for the word there. Um, this is sad. The camera's zooming out as well, which is weird, but okay then. Probably just for the castle. Yeah, we're zooming back in, okay. So that was a mother practically saying goodbye to her son, knowing that he's gonna die by her hand, even. So this is sad. It's a sad story. But uh, we're not over yet. We still need to clear out some Nilfgaardian camps and then have that final battle at Rivia Castle. We're actually closer than I anticipated. Although it feels like it, I'm not sure if the map actually corrobor corroborates that story. I don't think it does, because... Yeah, there's a bit more left. I'm guessing we're still about three to four episodes away from the end here. Although this might be Rivia Castle. The question is... Oh no, this is going to be Rivia Castle. Yeah, and there's the exclamation park, yeah. Okay, okay. Slowly making our way towards the end. But uh, before we do that, still a lot to do. Your Grace, said Reynard, saluting and clicking his heels. Peasants from the Scala region have arrived at camp. Supplicants, wishing to deliver a plea to your person. Meave sighed. Supplicants, trials, audiences. All aspects of queendom she did not miss. Very well, bring them here. She replied. And instruct them to be brief, with no digressions. The band of commoners was led by a sturdily built beekeeper dubbed Ethelred, son of Theobald. Finding himself in the Queen's presence, he fell to his knees and waved his arms in his best impression of proper etiquette. Oh, my lady, the Queen, your gracious mightiness, take pity on us tillers and toilers. Was all around leaving us but scraps to live off and belly, that to be honest. So we beg you, don't do it. Don't raise the levers. We can't pay more than- What? Meave interrupted. What the devils are you talking about? What? Your decree? One they nailed to our notice board? The peasant said, sheepishly pulling out a parchment and pointing to the relevant paragraph with his rough finger. We, Queen Meave, do hereby proclaim that if our throne we shall recover, the tallage, murage and pavage we shall raise threefold. The expenses of this war for to compensate at the cost of the common folk. And there we go. We finally get confronted with the uh, the negative propaganda that Nilfgaard's been pumping out. Meave and Reynard exchanged astonished glances. 
They had issued no such decree. But you know it's the on document there. document bore her signature and seal. Perhaps we found like four Lillen's of those doing. already. Impossible. Meave said firmly. My son sank low, but not so low as to forge my name. Then who fabricated this decree? The Nilth Guardians. The Queen replied without hesitation. They have access to my seal, to my scribes. They wish to spread fear, uncertainty and doubt, turn my folk against me. And they are liars without any honour. Especially with the lovely artwork on the decree the there. The Queen tore the falsified document to shreds, knowing this would solve nothing. She had to find the printers churning out these fakeries and end their run. Okay, so that seems like a good next objective then. Find the printeries and take them out. There's usually some indication. Ooh, there's more Nilf Gardens over there, but we can't reach those. Because there's usually a bit of dialogue on those endings of bridges that I sometimes forget to go to the end of. Because there's nothing, clearly nothing there. But uh, yeah, the printery. So they've been printing a lot of propaganda to put Meave into a, well, a negative view. I'm just going to have to touch this, I suppose. There we go. Fast travel points. And of course, another Nilfgaardian battle. So let's whack these guys over the head. Frolics and revels, Nilfgaardians too enjoy merrymaking to dance, sing and drink. The black lads who indulged in these amusements at the roadside inn, the Foxtail, had not expected other guests would join them. Because yeah, we're gonna stab them in the gut. Take them out while they're drunk. Um, so pretty weird hand to start with. Which is interesting. I'm gonna use the Artusa Adapt oh, to start making oh, more onagers. Because I feel like I can take out those guys if I want to. So, end turn. And we have a champion which does damages again, again, us again by the amount of allies he has. But, let's use blood. And get... Grey Rider and the Warwag. So, Grey Rider at the bottom yes. and the Warwagon at the top. Using him already by one and then we can use the angrani blade cards to pull the war wagon back maybe another gray rider and another artusa adept so the gray rider over here i live to artusa adept over here and boost up those riven honor juice there we go and then the third new orders no ah. Ah. Then, with that done, we can... Hmm. Rivian Sapper, I suppose. Yeah, Rivian Sapper. Moving that Good over here. Again. Killing off the light Top infantry units. And damaging the promising recruit. And there we go, we kill it as well. And we move two units again, which is also great for Gasco. 62.25, probably not enough to make him pass. Just Hang yet, anyway. Um, you know what? I won't have much uses for egg, so let's just use egg now. Prepare to fight if you've any honor. Like this, seventy-seven thirty-five. They keep boosting themselves over there as well. Then a Gascon over here. <laughs> Wait, you're serious? Boosting them up to immense heights. Those guys keep getting boosted as well, but I think I'm just gonna pass in an extra. Oh, he does it for me. Never you mind. Passing then as well. Okay, first round that was. Um, I think I'm gonna pass the next one. And we'll see you at the end of round three then, I suppose. So, we're facing another one of those very annoying Alba Cavalry veterans. But, I've set up a few things that we might be able to use to deal with it. So, let's do this. That damage him, damages him like that. Then, we use the Discased Warrior first. Gets us up to 6 and 2 armor. Now, 4 damage with these guys. Like this. Four damage is not enough. Four damage is not enough. So I'm gonna have to deal with it while it's going on. So 
Let's just use the Rivian Onagers. Knowing that I'm gonna get damaged by them every single time. So no, I'm not gonna do that. Let's just use Isbel Destroyer. Put it over here. Ever learn. And then the turn. Damage all enemies by one and boost one by the amount of damage, which is fine. Now, if I play this correctly, I'm gonna get damaged by this thing again by three. So, but that's not gonna help us much. So let's just use this well destroy and that kills it outright. Okay. Never you mind, you don't even need to do anything with that. You might have noticed the amount of uh, onagers with, uh, which can do 30 damage each if I want to, but uh, yeah, there's no, there's really no use for it now, is there? <laughs> Could do this to get Isbel out again, but otherwise this is mostly going to be damage. Could play Dogger 2 Blades, uh, maybe the Brawler and Dogger 2 Blades, but that's just going to add more units, isn't it? There we go. And the rest of the Skellig units go away. And that's basically it, right? The other units also get their charges back, but yeah, I don't think there's much use to that now. Aside from getting more charges to my uh, Rivian Ologist, which I can't use. So, there we go. Battle done. Could have killed a lot more where that came from. So at that point I used the Aratusa Adapts to just duplicate the Onagers, which also get boosted by two every single time. Which makes them strong enough to usually, because they're prioritized by the enemy usually, to survive the onslaught after that. And we get a few more, ooh, two puzzle battles and a question mark. Always nice. And then this, I, Queen Meave, so another propaganda. I, Queen Meave, hereby proclaim that whosoever has aided the Nilfgaardian war effort shall face punishment of the highest severity. Whosoever has bartered with, repaired equipment for, or eaten fare made by Nilfgaardian shall receive 30 lashes. Finally, whosoever has taught them our language or served as guide shall be executed in the slowest possible manner. Because of course, they, I think they're putting it on a bit too thick. Because I think most of the people will realize that this is not the case. This is Shoop again. Shoop, are you back? The Troll Gourmand. In one of Rivia's many caverns dwells a blind troll known as, to locals as Sniff Sniff. He is often seen along roadsides where he greets weary travelers and warmly invites them to his cave for soup. On occasion, utterly drained from hunger, some actually accept the offer and follow the troll to his home. They soon realize, however, that they'll not enjoy a single slurp of this soup, but rather become a key ingredient in it. Play the ingredient card that matches the scent of each unit, sometimes throwing an ally into the fire is the best way out. Great! So, play the ingredient card that matches the scent of each unit. Skulls, it's not a proper meal without a carcass left behind. Do we need to... If I use the skulls... Is that would think that the skulls... Got your meat but no fire to cook it, this'll do the trick. Carries the stench of cheap booze and garlic stewed in the gut. Cheap booze? She booze. And then the alchemist prized by all trolls for the tender flesh steamed in roots and herbs over many, many years. Roots and herbs. So the mandrake. So let's use the mandrake next to the alchemist. Or no. Okay, so that was correct. Then the slinger. She booze and garlic stewed in the gut. That would be foul ale, I suppose. There we go. Then we got the forager. Day and night up to their elbows and corpses can't mistake the smell for anything else. Which would mean that we go for skulls, right? Let's end the turn. And get that guy back. And then the final one. During war's quieter moments, he picks mushrooms and saves slippery jacks for the pickle jar. Which means the mushrooms, I suppose. It's what every soup needs for the, that extra depth and character. There we go. And that's the puzzle done for, I suppose. There we go, victory. And there's the troll dealt with. That, is, that was a cool little battle. Well, not really a battle. 
definitely more puzzle than battle. But there was also a question mark around here somewhere. We need to be heading up. Yeah, there it is. That gates. What is this all about? There seems to be two people inside of that village, but... Oi, maybe, cried Gascon. As usual, paying no heed to courtly etiquette. Come here a minute. Would it hurt so terribly to occasionally address me by your grace or your majesty? Didn't want to be petty, but since you bring it up, you've never once addressed me as the Duke of Dogs. Oh. Meave sighed, <laughs> rolling her eyes. Awesome. Get on with it. My lads jumped one of the black clad's transports. Guess what they were hauling? Gascon handed Meave a pot filled to the brim with a thick, dark fluid. Mm. Ink. Paint? Close. Prince's ink. Same tone used in those phony decrees. Meave spun on her heel, put a hand to her mouth, and yelled, Reynard, send scouts to calm the area. Her soldiers returned a few hours later with good news. They were able to find a Nilfgaardian printer's workshop hidden in an abandoned barn. It was guarded by a division of elite infantry. Right. So? Gascon thumbed the edge of his blade. Shall we stop the presses? Of course. Of course. Attack the printer's workshop. Time for the Nilf Guardians to publish a retraction. Spoke the queen as she drew her sword. Signed with their own blood. Follow me! The Lyrians did not need to be told twice. That was a one line. The queen's honor, her good name. That was a cause well worth fighting for. And there can't be too many of them, right? They're just one building. There we go, wartime propaganda. One Nilfgaardian propaganda pamphlet reads as follows. Meave, a faint and timid woman, has not the courage nor strength to defend the country in times of war. They would soon see, however, that this claim was, on every account, false. So, just a shortened battle. We should be done with this rather quickly. It's... it's her! Yes, you fool her! Sound the alarm! Larum! Sound the alarm, because they're panicking! Now. So, two champions already, uh, oh, commandants. And uh, the Guardian Braveheart for every two units destroyed by self by six and damage all enemy units by two. Okay, so we need to focus on that one first. And then a Black Infantry Arbalest. So let's put the War Wagon down all, as a start. Use me and Granny Blades to pull back the War Wagon. And use another War Wagon, maybe? Or two Artusa Adapts, because I have kind of a bit of a plan here. Let's use my two Artusa Adapts. And both use them to wish, double up on the honor juice. Like oh, this. Oh, Lady Margarita told and us like this. Again. And then the third. <laughs> ah, that is annoying. Very good. And why are you doing this? Why are you... Okay. Fair enough. Let's put another Aratusa Adept down. <sighs> we got another Arabian Onagen over lines. here. And end the turn. Wise choice. So those damage dealings are coming in hot. Um, hmm... I'm guessing it's best to start playing my onages now, because I can start using that to clear out the more dangerous units, um, like the Nilf Guardian Braveheart. So let's do that, and end the turn. Then, as you might have noticed, I'm going to use reinforcements to choose an ally and play all the copies of it. Ooh, this is hurting. This is hurting, and with the reinforcements, I'm not going to have enough. But hey, let's start with this then. One, two, three, four, five. This is ridiculous. Six, seven, and eight. So that is 16 times three, which should be enough to take out a lot of these guys. So that's four more on those, removing the immunity and damaging those. Then the next one should focus on the Braveheart, because I don't want to deal with that either. And then we'll just not be able to kill either of those Arbalests, but we're getting there. Like this. Oh, and I had two more charges I could have killed one. Never mind. Kinda missed. Claw and cat. 
Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, that, that was pretty random, wasn't it? Um, I could, of course, just use the Divana Runestone now, but I need Death Wish units to do that. Okay. Fair enough. So let's use Blood first, then. Uh, the War Wagon should be fine, actually. The War Wagon and the Disgraced Brawler. So War Wagon is not going to be enough, but it's going to be something as a start. So there we go. Two extra and the Brawler. Then we can use the Donnager to damage those two and move forward. Because in a second we'll have enough charges to, uh, well, kill pretty much everything. Off to the front yet again. Ow and ow. Okay. But now, Rivian Sapper. It's gonna be a right good Damages to light infantry units. And then the Vanandal Elite. There we go. That gives us two charges on every onager again. You can also use Meave, so let's do that in a second. Um, let's damage those two by three. Then start attacking. Just gonna see what this does first. Like this. Then kill the first Arbalests. Then the other Garbalest. That's that guy down. Then the Impera Brigade that won't be able to kill completely, I think. Oh, never mind. I can. Like this. Then I can use Meave and Granny Blades to get the, uh, the Disgraced Brawler out. Like this. Then use Raynard. And a Forager. Like this. Uh, Raynard over here. Her Majesty knows which gets us charges again. And then the Forager over here. Oh, be ashamed to let this beauty and let's kill everything else. So use the Forager on that Onager as well. But that gives us two more charges. Like this. Two and three. And just kill the Dalen Foot Soldiers, just because we can. Yeah, the Onagers are a bit overpowered, like this. There we go. Still have 11 charges left. Oh, the Commissar will hear. Which is great for that. Now, um... Let's put the Drummer over here. Time is a waste of time for one like me. And then use the rest of the charges on that new Dalen Foot Soldier. Killing it off. And then the turn. Yeah, I have a machinery powerhouse at my disposal right now, so this guy isn't gonna kill anything. Because he even does one damage. <laughs> um the regiment drummer. That gives us a blacksmith. Which is good, I think. So let's just use blood. And that of course doesn't give us anything useful. Could go with Isbal, but I have enough destroyers available already, so that's just two, two disgraced brawlers. Get the rest out of there. And put those yeah, brawlers oh, somewhere we still have space. Done. Um, the Rivian Onager again. Like this. And use Meave's ability again, I think. Because if I use Meave's ability. Can pull back one of the one of the onagers over here. Yeah, maybe this one. I put another forager down. I don't. Yeah, we have the pitfall trap and the forager. Pitfall trap over here. Forager over here. I only need corpses. Immediately using it. Quite then using the regiment drummer. That is a slinger. Send the forager over here. Giving us a buttload of charges. That we can use on that Dairman Foot Soldier. Just like that. And end the turn. Off to the front yet again. And that just allows us to kill everything, doesn't it? We can actually use the slinger on our own units as well. Clearing out a bit more space. 
and giving us more charges. That's what we want, right? More charges. I'm going to use the one with the one uh, damage left. Goodbye. Yeah, and then... Um, I don't have any death wish units on the field, I think. So... Let's just give more charges. That's what we do, right? Give give just more charges to right. units. Right. Like right. this. Uh, and end a turn. I think we kind of have this. Think, think we pretty much have this. And the Forager, and it gives us even more charges. And then the Devana Runestone is absolutely nothing. And then, yeah, just, just kill it for good measure. There we go. Boss. They weren't expecting us. Seems they believe their own Blarney. Indeed. The Nilfgaardians fought fiercely, led by a seasoned covert agent. Seeing he would soon fall into enemy hands, he put a knife to his throat and, in a quick slash, sent blood pouring over paper and still wet ink. Reynard leapt towards him, trying to stanch the red tide. But it was too late, and the spy's secrets perished with his last gargled breath. Meave picked up a freshly printed pamphlet. The document listed her many crimes and misdeeds, the true and the manufactured alike. Above the main body of the text, an etching depicted her, well, in a very unflattering manner. How about a taste of their own medicine? Asked Gascon, piecing blocks of type into a scathingly foul phrase. Me and the lads will scratch out a couplet about Epdahi. Spread it around the countryside. Give the folk a hearty laugh at those tossers' expense. Um, of, of course. Begin producing your own propaganda. Yes. These presses should be put to good use. The Queen said. But printing lewd jests is not it. We must spread facts. Tell what the Nilfgaardians did in Aldersburg. How they tried to murder me in Mahakam and Angren. What fate lies in store for those they conquer. Gascon grew serious and set the ink-stained type back down. Get to work. Before the sun sets, I wish to hold the first document in my hands. Soon, in every town, village and tavern, there hung a notice detailing Nilfgaard's crimes. The outraged Rivians did what they could to strengthen the Queen's army. Some by offering coin, others by joining her ranks. There we go. That was a nice boost. Not that we need it, but maybe that's going to come into account at the final battle? I don't know. What this was this guy going to say? Nilfgaard left none alive in Rosberg. Not even one woman. And no child was spared. Peasants from Edirne have been captured and put to work by force. Nilfgaard now prepares the same fate for Rivia and all Rivians. Emperor Emir Far Emrys is a Vran imposter. A Vran Doppler. A Vran Doppler. So yeah, the, the lizard warriors from... Because uh, we see those cars in Gwent as well. Emperor Emir Far Emrys. There we go. A Vran imposter. But, uh, so kind of a lizard in human skin, which is a bit weird, but fair enough. Might have added just a single joke in there. And with that done, we got, ooh, we're over 30k gold now. I'm gonna take a little break, because uh, we just destroyed the presses, which was kind of our objective of today. So, hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. Goodbye!